All right. Hey, guys. So uh, a lot of people have been asking me, um, hey, you know, Chev, how do you feel about the game this year? I told everyone I wanted to wait two, I wanted to wait two weeks uh, until after the games come out officially before I give my opinion on things. And it's been a little bit longer than that, I believe. So uh, I think it's time. And this is going to be the good, the bad, and the ugly. And we're going to start with the ugly, and then the bad, and then the good. And for a couple reasons. First being, I want to get out of the way first. I don't want to end on that. Two, it's not as much. There's more good than there is bad. So that's kind of cool. Um, let's start with the ugly first. Hey guys, I mean, you, you can't really make this up. This is actually a couple days after I recorded this video. I'm chiming in here. JoJo's going to slip me in a little shoehorn. There's actually another game breaking bug um, that has hit the game that fits into the ugly section. It's deleted people's accounts. It unlinked them apparently. And when you tried to relink it, it would say, do you want to link it to this level zero, zero stub account or like level 30 something, 3000, 30,000 stub account. Some people accidentally picked the zero one. So their account got reset and there was no way of fixing it. Some people picked the right one and it still got reset. So, and it, they've been, it, this has happened. This happened at seven o'clock at night, Eastern time, April 4th. This happened the same day today, but two in the morning. So it's been well over 12 hours. It's been, let's do some quick math here. It's been 17 hours since this problem has gone down. No update since the acknowledgement this morning, you know, a few hours, a few hours after I got into the studio. It's just been, this has been MLB the bug 24. This has got to be a crash course, a lesson for them in never, ever, ever think about going without a tech test again, because they're playing, they're playing catch up with all the bugs that should have been caught in the beta. And that's why they've been distracted, probably loosening their defenses. I'm just speculating here. But it's just been a nightmare release for them. And I'm really, I'm, I'm honestly, I feel bad. I'm not trying to kick them while they're down. I really feel bad. I have a lot of fun with this game. I just, we just want to play it. That's all, right? But this is a serious one. People lost a lot of money and time, depending on which account they had going, if there were no money spent or money spent or both. Um, this can't happen. This is a really bad bug. And I think this is, it's a good time to look ourselves in the mirror of SDS and go, we need to hire more people. We need to bring in some more people um, for stability, for coding, for things like that. It's just, the team is just not enough. Too many bugs for a AAA studio, right? Um, so you got to step up and start giving them more resources, whatever it may be, but, uh, it's not good. It's not good, right? This is what happens when you don't prepare. Uh, I put this tweet out. Maybe Jojo could show it. I think there should be an alpha closed alpha for invites only content creators and comp guys to do a small play test before a beta to kind of catch things then to test new features, see how they feel beta to catch a lot of things. And then we move on to an actual launch because this is, this is insane, right? We're not even a month into the game's launch. And there's been multiple game breaking bugs. It's crazy. I hope they figure it out. I'm really, I wish nothing, I wish them nothing but the best. I don't envy their job, but we got to clean it up. As my coaches would say, if we're, if we're struggling, uh, clean it up, clean it up, clean it up. That's all. Back to the rest of the video. <laughs> Number one to me has got to be these two things hand in hand. Number one of the glitches. The story of, of MLB 24 has been MLB the glitch 24. And I'm going to say this off the bat. I'm going to get out of the way early. Um, I don't know the details or the logistics or the reasoning behind why there wasn't a tech test this year. There could have been a very good reason, but it is showing its nasty head, right? The demons, the bugs. It's just proving the point that they needed to run one this year and they need to continue to run them. There are a lot of bugs, especially the two-way bug, um, the stamina being unlimited, as well as the pinpoint issue amongst other things that would have been easily identifiable if we had a bunch of people playing the game. Now, that being said, those things really should have been caught especially the pinpoint not working would have been something that I, we would have discovered really quickly if we just played the game the two-way stamina thing is interesting because i can understand how that would go undetected if it wasn't already something that has been a problem and already fixed in the past so that's the biggest thing is the bugs too many of them there's still some but it's just it was a lot right the the first week two weeks of the game first week two weeks of the game spent uh, it was spent basically being a, a tech test it was the beta they kind of used it as the beta Next up, that goes in line with tech tests needing to happen, servers. They've been really, to me, not just going down, but just being really volatile. I have had some of the worst connection and lag in games that I've had in years. Um, since 21, this has felt the worst for me, and that was the year we had a closed tech test and didn't do enough of a server stress test. So it's been kind of tough for me. So um, you know, I'll try and mix in some clips here of some wonky things and some other things as well. All right, guys, Tiny, you see, look at, oh, look at Tiny. <laughs> see you, Tyke. Little Tyke's pitching. <laughs> this is not a show, hey, bro. This is Shuey. Hey. 
That was good timing, guys. That was good timing. Just to kind of show what I'm going along with. But also, another thing here that goes along with bugs, the sliders. Sliders need to be adjusted. Right now, they're shrinking the PCI to a minuscule grain size. That wasn't a lunch swing. Wait, 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 clip that. Clip that, clip that, clip that, clip that. That's okay. We need that. Okay, okay. We need, we need, I need to send that over. I need, I need that clip of those two swings. That was a good PCI on the ball, and I lunged at it on a slider. And then after that, my PCI shrunk to the size of a P on a slider. On even when it's in the zone, that's an odd one. Um, it, and it's, it's, it shouldn't be one pitch just makes your PCI shrink. If I had to guess, I think the dynamic PCI feature, which is a mechanism that's put in the game, it shrinks your PCI when you swing at balls out of the zone, which I like, unless you have bad ball hitter. I think it's accidentally triggering on sliders a lot of the time, especially if they're low in the zone. I don't know why, but I think it's what's happening. The other bug that I don't like with hitting is that there are a lot of these random jump sword swings or like falling over lunge swings or like you jump out the way, even on pitches that are normally in the zone. I have one where I did that on a good timing swing where the ball was touching my inner and I went like this and completely missed it. So I don't know what that is. It's triggering incorrectly. That's another bug. Just big things. Just going to cover the big things, things that are just getting in the way, right? Things that rear their ugly, ugly face and they just show themselves uh, every game I play and I've seen I'm seeing those sliders and those lunch swings and bad servers are every game I play in ranked it's really tough um, freezes and co-op just in general they kind of go hand in hand that's the ugly too it's the last bit of the ugly co-op has so much potential and it is so fun but there are two things that are plaguing that mode one it is inherently a game mode rallied around cooperative play and playing with your friends and there's no play versus friends option which is insanity the amount of content that we could farm or just the fun we could have hosting private lobbies with your buddies playing 2v2 3v3 would be just right it'd be so fun and it'd be so good for the game it's it needs to be added to the game the second thing is freezes and disconnects i mean this is the third time it happened today to, again but the third time it's happened to me we got into a freeze off my opponents disconnected i think actually is what happened and me and dalt my buddy who also streams check him out at dalt d-a-u-l-t-t -T, on twitch but anyways i'll link it in the description we got the loss even though they disconnected and it's happened to me multiple times we had a freeze where we froze uh, me and my opponents and i quit because i didn't feel like waiting in it and they gave us the dub it was insanity. It doesn't make any sense. That's got to get fixed because it's got so much potential. I don't want to see it die like custom leaks. Ugh, I'm sick of talking about the ugly. It's gross. I don't like to talk about it because I've had a mostly positive experience with the game this year by a lot. And I don't want, I just want, I, I, I have to be fair though, right? Um, the bad, this is just one thing to me. I'm experiencing a lot of quits in ranked seasons. There are a lot of pros in ranked seasons and W changes that fall into the good. I'll get to that, but there are still too many quits. The stakes just aren't high enough for people in ranked, right? And here's a little bit of an issue that I find strange. Not that this is a problem, but ranked rewards are sellable as well as the program card. BR is not. BR programs are not sellable. Yet, BR is inherently a mode that, that has far less quits because it's literally about winning and losing. That gets you 12, 10 and 0. You want to go 10 and 0, so you can't lose, so you can't just quit. Yet, those aren't sellable. Yet, in ranked, the mode where people are already quitting the most because people only play games they feel like they can win. We'll get into that in another video, maybe. But they quit that one, even though that's supposed to be the epitome of, of competitive integrity in this. Even though the rewards are sellable, you could freely quit that one. Now, let's transition into the good for ranked. The change that the program is only, the program card and the program pack for World Series is only accessible after the second round of missions come out is nice because that allows people who get to World Series earlier and the higher ranked players to sell the cards at their peak price before they plummet inevitably because they're easily accessible. I like that change a lot. I made a mistake on stream today thinking that um, I didn't realize because I was looking at the price of Randy and I'm like, damn, man, like this is crazy. Like it's he's nothing. He's going for nothing. He can't even sell him for much, even though I sold my Randy for a lot more. I, I wasn't thinking the only reason why he's plummeted in price is because everyone's getting him now because you're able to. The second round of missions came out. But before that, you were you couldn't even get to, to Randy at all to, or to that World Series pack. You could get to McCutcheon, I think. I'm pretty sure I could be wrong about that. But I, you weren't able to get to the pack. So I was wrong about that. That was a mistake on my end. That's a good change too, but we still have to do something to mitigate quits. And I get people telling me this all the time, right? I'll play devil's advocate. You're a streamer. You know, you'll, you're the only one who cares about quits because you're recording a video. There is some truth to that, but I have a lot of people, dozens and dozens, tell me that they want to play a full game, that they've played their first 20 ranked games and haven't played a single nine yet, that everyone just quits, quits, quits. It's more than just free points because we know that free points don't necessarily matter because making World Series gets you the card, which is cool. 
right? But here's the here is the oxymoronic logic here, right? Defending quitters and quitting by saying that you're the only one, right, a streamer who cares about quits because of content. Quits are good, right? People like to get quits. You can't defend quitters by saying they like to get quits because if they're quitting games a lot, it doesn't matter that these same people are receiving quit wins too. It's just negating it. They're staying still. I would like to see them transition to an Overwatch type style where you can get like some sort of cosmetic like golden weapons or like that's what they do gold weapons even higher level jade weapons stuff like that something that feels a little more rewarding than a thousand icon uh, JPEG from re reaching a thousand which is incredibly hard to do just things to think about but that's the oxymoronic plague issue that we have here you can't say quits are good and that's why can people like quits well the people who are doing the most quitting they're not forcing quits they're the ones just quitting so they're not receiving that benefit and even if they are it negates their progress in general so it doesn't make any sense it doesn't make sense even and i'm not blaming these people i want to be very clear here they're quitting because the stakes aren't high enough for them and there's no reason for them to stay they'll only lose a couple points for playing someone like me if they're rated 700 and i'm 900 and they'd rather play a game that they could win that's kind of how it works i'm blaming the system it needs a little bit more tweaking that's the last of the bad though we spent eight and a half minutes on this i'm done with that i don't want to I don't want to talk about that anymore. We're on to the good. Uh, I talked about the rank system actually making a lot more sense now with having a second phase, second wave of missions that give us time to sell the World Series awards if we want to for peak price before we get them back at a lower price. It actually rewards people who are high skilled, who put the time and the effort and they grind the World Series. It gives them a profit. I love that. W change. Thank you for that. Collections, let's go to collections. They don't feel too overpowering. Now, what I mean, other than Babe and Palmero and Pedro, they're going to be very nice and we're going to see the value of Palmero and Pedro come new season resets when you have these guys to start the season. Um, when all the cards get reset and it's hard to come by anyone who's 90 plus and you have 295s and a 99, Bay being the best bat in the game offensively on paper and a top arm, it's good. Now on the season collections, it's very well paced so far. It is possible to get Rich Aurelia. I do not have Rich Aurelia right now. Um, so that is something interesting to think about. I'm actually going to collect these guys. Hopefully that wasn't the bad move. I didn't pay attention. I think it might have made a mistake, but it's all right. Either way, it's really well paced and they're very helpful. Biggio was a bit of a miss because he has no secondaries. But either way, if you like Biggio, you can rock with him. And it's only 30 cards, so I think it's a pretty good reward. Franco is he's been so good for me so far. He's exactly what we needed because by the time I got him, I was in he was my best lefty in the pen and my best reliever when I got him. Right? As someone who's gone five times flawless, finished collections already, it's it's nice to have him. There's been some other arms released since then, but he's still top. Top of the food chain. Not, maybe not the best, but he's up there. Now, Rich Aurelia is really fun because it almost feels like this is something that is very, very well crafted. It's actually perfect. Shortstop is, is plaguing people right now in terms of like, they just feel like it's not a great shortstop. Mookie's there and oh, it's a me issue. I suck with Mookie. And, but I even, not everyone even has Mookie. If you don't have Mookie, it's tough to get a nice, well-rounded shortstop. Aurelia is going to fit that bill. That defensive rating, plus those numbers offensively, is going to feel like a nice breath of fresh air. And he's a new legend, too, with great quirks. So I can't wait to get to him. So there is a carrot to chase that literally makes your team better, but it's not right in your face. Everyone's getting him immediately. You know, it's it, you got to work towards something. It's nice. There's a lot before we get to the packs, but it should be that way. These guys are 99s. There's going to be steps in between. There's going to be absolutely one or two more cards minimum before we get to 280. So probably three, actually. Mm -hmm. Collections are, are very well paced. It doesn't feel like the game is all about collections. Now, there is this Vladdy that I have had zero interest in going after, to be honest, because he just doesn't really fit my team. And he's a pretty weak collection reward, I'll be honest. Uh, not, these cards aren't easy to come by. If they were, I'd understand making this card so weak. But to me, he's only a 91 because he plays first base. And that's a that's a pretty easy position to get a high overall for, right? That's how overalls are not just like static, right? It depends on positions. Left fielders, for example, like don't need as much stats to get 99 rating as a, compared to a center fielder. It's actually a real thing. So that's a, he's well balanced and he'll kill it for Hall of Fame and below. For, but for me, I'm legend right now. I'm looking for people with a little bit of higher contact ratings. But that is what it is. And it's it's hard to get these guys. You got to buy them all off the market if you don't get the pre order bonuses. And even if you do, you don't get all of them. So that's another thing. But yeah, so that's that. They don't feel overpowering. They feel very solid. Uh, they feel like it's something that's nice to, to shoot for, but it's not the main point of the game. Last year, we kind of had a philosophical issue with 23. It was like the whole game was about collections and nothing else mattered. Ranked rewards, BR rewards, blah, blah, blah. It was all about collections, 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 centered around offline play. It was quite boring. So that's nice change this year. Very, very cool. And then on to content again, going you know back to the Easter egg program. This is a W program because there's a bunch of good cards and John Smoltz that can help your team, right? And I'm, I'm so happy that between the Spring Breakout program and the Easter Egg program, we're back to getting to a, a series of content drops that 
actually you look forward to because they're going to improve your team it is nice to see a content drop and go i want this guy on my team i want this guy on my team and they literally make your team better i bought one off the market for my team i got one from the program uh i bought one off the market as well out of vino i got him for free bummer and on my uh Arenado team build i have johnny bench playing left kind of for memes but he's also really solid on that team so there's a lot here and it's nice like I miss the days of getting a ranked seasons reward or a BR reward or finishing a big program. And like the, the Supreme cards from those drops made your team better. Last year, like if you wanted to debut a new player as a content creator or just as a player, it felt like you were specifically and um, weirdly making your team worse just for the sake of trying something new, which that shouldn't be how it is. So this is a W. Uh, Gameplay wise, we'll show some footage. Hitting in any park feels possible, barring some caveats. Welcome to the game! Me, oh my! Run it back, Turbo! Are you even pitching? One ten! Oh, oh my god! One twelve over the green monster! Again! El Capitan! Get, go! Go! Underneath it just late? We're so back. That left. Harry Ford! The Brit! Hitting so juiced. I'm so here for it, too. For the most part, my journey all the way to Legend, it, I could hit just about anywhere if I was hitting well. There are some weird moments. Obviously, sliders get in the way. There is a large dialogue going on, especially on Twitter and on social media about, you know... It's only you're only able to play at shield woods if you're a legend player blah 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 and i got a couple thoughts on that it is increasingly hard for me to score and for other people consistently right now on legend for a few reasons there are some bugs the sliders are a serious problem pcis are already tiny enough you can't shrink them even further and sometimes i've have clips of this i gotta find it if i can a good swing slider in the inner no contact clearly a bug and that just can't happen I've had instances where the PCI shrunk on pitches for whatever reason, and a 12 or a 13 PCI, which is really damn good, 15 being the best, a perfect perfect, and it's just a pop-up. Because it's something to do with PCI shrinking. But other than that, like if you square it up, it goes. Ultimately, do I think that you have to play at a high elevation park to score on Legend this year? No. We're just coming off of an entire year of using 99s since launch on Legend against inferior pitching with giant PCIs hitting bombs everywhere left and right. Our teams aren't good right now. We're getting pitchings outweighing right now in the power creep. It's just going to be that way, especially with inside edge, right? Look at it. Look, 85. What, think about this. Last year, when did you ever use guys with 85 contact? 92, 94, 89, uh, 105 was it is, and plus inside edge. This is one of the highest, like 102 being really high right now. Piazza, like same deal. Cutchin, like he's a program board, 94 on one side. We had everybody who was 110 plus against pitchers with 100 to 110 hits per nine. So of course it feels that way. But the scores on Legend are supposed to be lower. It's not like I'm squaring up perfects or goods and they're dying. They go. It's just harder to do that. This is just an isolated experience for me. I am struggling to score on Legend right now. I'm definitely playing worse. It's because it's supposed to be that way. It's a me issue. It's something fun to look forward to. You, f I feel even better when I square up a ball now on Legend because it's harder to do that. And another point here that I want to make, right? This is important. People are telling me flukes are happening more often. No, they're not. Your outfield is worse. <laughs> we had 99s last year from launch, max outfield everywhere, five tool players everywhere, uh, God, Jesus, and, and the Holy Spirit everywhere in the outfield. We have Acuna, who's one of the top players in the game right now, with 67 fielding and 62 reaction and only 84 speed for a guy who stole 70 bags. Trout, 93 speed, but 71 reaction, only 83 fielding with a 79 arm. Bernie Williams, who is a collection reward for one of the best teams in the game, live series. In the secondary, 79 speed, 76 reaction, 81 fielding. That's Luis Gonzalez numbers in left field. 99 overall Luis Gonzalez type numbers, man. We didn't play Roberto Clemente last year in the outfield because he was too slow. With max everything in like 78 speed or something. So why on earth would 81, 84, 76, 79 feel great? It's not going to. That's why flukes feel like they're happening more. We have slower infielders. They're not getting to the ball. I'm not chastising people. I just want everyone to realize that we don't have to press the panic button yet. I know it seems like it's a, you know something I want to keep in mind, like or, or at the forefront of the conversation today because it's part of my job and I want to keep the, the the ship from sinking and it's good for business if people are happy. I'm not trying to do any of that. I'm just being honest. I really try and analyze things before I criticize them or make opinions on these things because form opinions because I just don't want to be 
jumping the gun here. We have a long year, man. And if we just say shit sucks and we don't really explain why or what we mean, it's going to be bad. Other than that, hitting in every park's possible. I've put up double digits at pro stadiums. They feel smoother across the board. If we iron out the server problems, it's feeling great. It's definitely smoother. I, when the game was down the other day because of the bugs where everyone had small heads or, or big heads and tiny bodies, I played 23 to kill time. It is so much smoother, 24. It's actually night and day. The bit rate is just cleaner. It's crispier. It doesn't, there's not as much lag with the fans. It's nice, man. It's great. I love that this year. I really do. And I think the last point here I want to end with here is something that maybe we haven't even thought about, but something that I've been thinking about the last couple of days. Hitter variety type just may be back with power creep. I think if we get a 93 overall, like headliner Tony Gwynn with really high contacts, vision, good fielding speed, and even like just okay power ratings, like 50, 60 max, he is going to have a place on people's team. Honus Wagner specifically is someone to look out for, right? A really good fielding shortstop with great contacts and he's just lacking a little bit of power, but the way the ball's carrying this year, right? And some little quirks and a good swing, he might be invaluable to your team. PCI size is in very important, especially for legend players. Something to keep out, you know, keep in mind while we're playing. So that's it for me for all the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Way more good than anything else. We have hitter variety. He could hit any single park. It feels great. Yeah, you upgrade your team with almost every single content update. You know, it's, it's only been really one big one so far other than the launch stuff, but I'm noticing the trends, right? I'm seeing these things. Collections don't feel overpowering, so there's a reason to play ranked in BR and events. Ranked system actually is intuitive and rewards people for pushing towards the top. I like where we're at, and I'm not ready to push the panic button, guys. So let me know how you feel. Doesn't play, by the way, doesn't mean you can't get frustrated. I get frustrated too. I get it. I still do. I'm very competitive. Sometimes this shit makes my anxiety flare up. I'm gonna be honest, because I get annoyed. But let's be patient. Let's try and think things through. I'll be better too. I love y'all, man. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you agree, disagree, or if you have different thoughts. See you guys next time. Peace.